Joining us now on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline, it is the former NFL Defensive Player of the Year who signed in the offseason here with the Colts. Stephon Gilmore is with us. Stephon, thank you for the time. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I am fantastic. It is great to have you on here because I think you're one of the more intriguing assets that we'll talk about over the course of this season with the Colts. I guess where I want to start here, we haven't talked before. I'm curious, what sold you on wanting to be a part of this Colts situation this season? I think um, I just looked at the situation. I kind of took my time during free agency and and looked around, and um, I like what the Colts um, you know brought to the table and. Uh, with all the other talent that's on the team, I just wanted to, you know, bring my talents on the team, um, knowing the potential the team has, um, just adding someone like myself and a couple other players so we can get over top and, you know, hopefully um, have a good year this year. Uh, here's Stefan Gilmore with us. Did you get a sales pitch from any of your present teammates or was it all about Chris Ballard and company coming at you? I think Chris um, came at me, but I also knew, like, any more – um, Darius, a lot of players um, before, and um, just asked them how was the environment, you know, how was the team, uh, and I'm, uh, I like it, you know, it's, uh, it's good people, you know, work hard, um, you know, got great potential. We just got to go out there and put it all together and be able to win some games. As far as what you're trying to do, and this is what I gather, you know, from obviously camp been going on for a couple of weeks now, it seems like not only are you trying to perform at the highest level, which you always do, but you're also trying to get that from the teammates around you. You're trying to push those that are playing with you and against you up in Westfield for a, a, a similar level here as far as excellence is concerned. Is it kind of a little bit of coaching is what you're doing as well on the field? Yeah, for sure, because, you know, um, I was once, you know, a young guy at one point, and I, I would like to, you know, hear hear a lot of knowledge from, like, a player like myself or an older player that's seen a lot of football. So I try to help him in a lot of ways, uh, whether it's on the field, off the field, um, you know, teaching them how to, you know, make plays. And, um, you know, that's that's I think that's what we need in this game. You know, we need guys to, you know, talk to each other and help them out, you know, um, on the field and off the field. He is Stephon Gilmore of the Colts with us. Did you have a – impactful veteran teammate that did the same with you either in Buffalo or maybe even in New England back in the day? I think, um, you know, a lot of people helped me out in my career. Um, you know, when I was younger, uh, you know, I kind of had like the safeties helping me out, like Jerry Spur, guys like that. And, uh, you know, once I got to New England, they you know, like the, Devin McCourty, you know, Patrick Chung and those guys that had been there that played a lot of ball. Um, and, you know, and you just – you know, I, I always told myself, you know, when I get older, I'm going to be the same way um, because, you know, the game is not that hard. You know, if you if you, can, if you can take on the mental part of it, it'll make your job a lot easier. Um, so I try to help out a lot. I want to talk about the mental part of it because you play a position in which you have to have the shortest of short memories because we, we know this NFL-wise, it is stacked, the deck is – you know, leaning toward the offense, and you've got to have a, a short memory. How long did it take you to advance that thought in Buffalo on to New England? How long did it take you to get used to, you know what, there are moments here that you're not always going to come out on top, and you have to forget about those moments? I think yes, I try to stay even kill. you know. Even when you're doing good, you kind of try to stay even kill and, um, you know, just keep a level head, you know, focus on the next play no matter what happened. You know, it's easier said than done, but I think for my demeanor, you know, I try to stay in the moment and uh, and try to take on each and every moment. And I think they help me out um, each and every game and each and every year. I want to get uh, a couple of different angles. And Stefan Gilmore of the Colts, kind enough to join us on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Let's start with your defensive teammates. What do you really like about the group around you in that Colts secondary? I think a lot, we got a lot of talent in the secondary. You know, uh, we got safeties that can play the ball in the air, come down and hit. Uh, we got corners that can cover, and they also not afraid to tackle. So I think as a secondary, we got a little bit of everything. You know, we just got to, you know, keep dialing down the communication and um, just to keep playing with each other because we got a, uh, a lot of new faces um, in the secondary. Um, some some been here, but we got to, once we gel together, I think it's, you know, that's what it's about, gelling together at the right time being able to trust each other, and uh, I think our talents will take over from there. I have a uh, a great deal of thought on what you have teammate-wise up front. 
I, I think that that is, at least on paper, eyeballing this, as good of a group up front defensively as you're going to find throughout the NFL. What do you think about what's in front of you, certainly on the defensive line, and then how can that help a secondary that might have a little bit youth, and obviously with you as well, that veteran presence, help you out longer term defensively this season? Yeah, for sure. I think those guys up front, you know, those guys are very talented. You know, they they can, you know, stop the run. They can put pressure on the quarterback, you know, and that allow our job to be so much easier. You know, it goes hand in hand. You know, we can play tight covers on the back end and those guys getting after the quarterback, stopping the run. And I think, you know, the sky's the limit with that. And, um, you know, those guys, you know, you got to appreciate them because, you know, those guys, that's, their job is tough. Our job is tough. But, you know, if, we, if they can, you know, be one of the best in the league, you know, it's going to help us out a lot. Stefan, how good can this defense be collectively, in your opinion, this year? I think we can be good, but I like I'm, I'm a person that always thinks you have to go out and show it, and you know you have to earn it. Um, you know, but you know, on paper, you know, a lot like a lot of teams think they look good, but you know, you, once you once you get out there, you gotta you gotta show them and show the league what you made of. You know, it, Stephon Gilmore joins us. One of the things we talked about around here following the Colts for a number of years would be the wide receiver position. And obviously, Michael Pittman Jr. went over 1,000 yards a year ago. We, we know that what he brings to the table. How have you how have you looked at this wide receiving group, this pass-catching group for the Colts in terms of maybe what the average fan or a media, per, media person doesn't see? What have they impressed upon you? I think there are a lot of big receivers um, that can make, you know, big catches. Like you say, Pierce, um, you know, PC, um, you know, a lot of guys that, you know, that's not, um, you know, may not have a lot of height, but those guys can make plays. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to those guys having a good year, you know, and uh, coming out and doing what they're capable of doing. You know, with Matty Ice, you know, throwing in the ball, I think it's going to be a good, good thing going. Um, you bring up Alec Pierce, who's a rookie out of Cincinnati, a second-round pick. You have been, at least early in camp, going up against him a great deal. Are you, uh, you you giving him a really good sense of what to expect as a rookie trying to get used to the NFL level at wide receiver? Yeah, for sure. I try to, you know, uh, make it hard on him as much as I can. That's any receiver that I go against. But, you know, I try to, you know, talk to him and, you know, play certain techniques on him just so, you know, to make it once again the game come is easier you know i'm looking forward to him you know stepping up you know as a rookie and making plays off of you've been in the nfl at that position which goes without saying is a great deal of achievement because that is a position that that can be tough on folks you're a former nfl defensive player of the year but i'm curious was there a defining moment Maybe it was in Buffalo, maybe it was early on, where you knew that you could be this level of player. I mean, maybe ultimately this came back in college, but was there an NFL-defining moment where you thought, yep, this is me and this is how good I can be? I think I always knew um, since I got drafted to Buffalo. You know, um, you know, I played there five years, you know, went through three different coaches, uh, four different defensive coordinators. You know, and I think I always made plays in Buffalo, but once I got to New England, you know, everyone, everyone pretty much saw it, you know, and, um, you know, was able to win more games, you know, get more notoriety, I think. So um, I think I always had it, you know. Uh, I was just, you know, uh, younger, you know, in Buffalo, was trying to learn, you know, going through a lot of different staff and stuff like that and was able to turn it over in New England. Um, is New England as different NFL-wise as people say it is, or is that just a, a lot of conversation from those that's never been on the inside of it like you have? It's different. I think every every team has their, you know, different things that they – how they run their organization. Um, you know, a place like that, you know, I think, you know, teach you a lot about football. You know, that's one thing, you know, I appreciate from there. They, they taught me a lot about the game and, you know, as far as getting better and, and knowing what the offense is doing, you know, being a smarter football player. So, um, you know, I think everyone running that team differently. What do you expect from this team this year overall? We talked about defensively what you expect. What do you expect from this team? To win, you know, that's the goal, just win. You know, that's that's the thing that you want to do whatever it takes. You know, you never know how the game is going to go. But at the end of the, end of the quarter, uh, just to, to make sure it's a W on the column. So, uh that's the thing that, you know, we really focus on, you know, whatever it takes to win. Toughest dude you've ever had to go up against? 
maybe past or present NFL player right now? Probably Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Just, Calvin Johnson. I, I yeah. wondered, too, and you can answer why. I think we all understand why. But I like the fact that you, <laughs> you gave me a, a player that's no longer in the league because I assumed that you probably wouldn't give me a player in the league right now because you may match up against them at some point. <laughs> yeah. Again, correct? Yeah. yeah. But I think Calvin Johnson was the hardest to cover. Uh, how big he was and physically and, you know, yep. everything he brought to the game. All right. Are you adapting to Indy okay? How do you like things around here? It's good. I like it. Uh, you know, it's just getting adjusted. Family like it. So it's, just a, it's a good uh, – I'm looking forward to, you know, getting on Indy a little more. I like it so far. Um, Gus Bradley, defensive coordinator and the coaching staff, something you can get with. Has that been a pretty easy acclimation process for you as well? Yeah, it's good. You know, Gus is a great guy, a great coach. I coached a lot of great players. And um, I think, you know, he's going to allow us to put us in the position to make plays. So, um, you know, he's he's going to bring a lot to the table. He, he's on us every day. So hey, that's I, a great thing. I've said this constantly, uh, and I know we live in an era where everybody wants to talk about offense, offense and offense. I can't wait to see you guys play. I'm really excited about this Colts defense. Stefan, I appreciate your time. Thanks for being on with us today. And we'll do it again over the course of the season. Have a fantastic rest of training camp. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Stefan Gilmore right there on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. That is a wealth of knowledge. Very understated wealth of knowledge right there. I cannot wait to see this. And and I hope that the defense lives up to those expectations. Because honestly, outside of the pass catchers, I have probably talked more about this defense than I have talked about a Colts defense since I've been on the air here. I was thinking about that the other day. When was the last time I actually talked about a Colts defense more so than I have talked about a Colts offense? Yeah, probably around never. First time. A lot of expectations, no doubt about that. Stephon Gilmore, thank you, Colts, for putting him on here. Very good conversation. We'll podcast that up at 1075thefan.com. More to come at 239-1070. You guys can play off of that conversation and more coming straight at you. Don't move. We're back with you next.